to react on. Huh? It would be too slow to react, and then you panic, and it's like, oh, wait a second, where that is just being in the seat and just ingraining in the in your mind. It's like, okay, this is how far fast you could push the cart. This is too far. This is not hard enough. And then you just keep training your brain on what to do. And um, it, it seems like the guys that are in the carts all the time, they just have beautiful control of what yeah. the cart is doing. Yeah. It's very much muscle memory. Same with, say, you bought golf clubs, Tiger Woods golf clubs, Tiger Woods golf shoes, Tiger Woods golf glove. You don't go to the golf course and start playing better than Tiger Woods, do you? Because he's just done the reps. And the same with go-karting. Guys buy a Tony cart and a Vortex engine, an OMP suit, and dress up like Ardigo. But you're not Ardigo, you know. The, the guy was a freak. Yeah, that's why he drove for the Tony cart factory. Uh, you can pull any example you want out. Um, you've got to you, you got to do the cage. You've got to do the reps. Um, there's a great big team here in Australia. Had heaps of success. A guy's name's Tom Williamson Motorsport. He, he, incredible results. And uh, he had fast drivers teaching fast drivers, but they were at the track just ripping up gear, mate. They had axles in, axles out, seats in, seats out. He worked harder than anyone as a team boss, in my opinion. Um, and kudos to him. He got a lot of results, and he still does. And he has a but he has a really successful team at national level here. And a lot of the success, he's not at home on the couch. We might be at the moment because the damn COVID's closed everything down. But, um, yeah, he, he's at the track working all the time, practicing, practicing, practicing. And he doesn't need to. He's just, well, he needs to for his team's success. But, you know, um, he knows how to win and it's doing the reps. So you look at the look at the guys that are winning. And do something similar, which is a, a lot of practice. Yeah, and a lot of proper practice too. Um, yeah, I find nowadays over the past couple of years, I'll just go out to the track by myself and just pound laps. And a couple of weeks ago, I went out with some buddies. We, we call them in in America Team Visalia, and I started kind of paying attention to what their lap times were. And okay, can I push it a little bit harder? And I, I was sitting there thinking to myself, well, if I was here by myself, I know I wouldn't be this fast because I didn't have a proper running mate. And now uh, I'm out yeah. there with this team. It's like there's that little bit of a competition. It's like I, they've yeah. known me for a long time. I don't mind being the slowest guy, but my pride is like, wait a sec. I don't want them to think I'm a complete chode. Just yeah. A chode. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that. I'd have to say I'm the same. The year you go out there buzzing laps, someone passes you that's faster, than boom, you're just doing PBs. You're knocking three tenths straight off because you just get rusty. You're like if you're not carding, like it, I've done thousands and thousands of laps over the years, and I drove a cart for the the other day for the first time. It was a customer's cart. It was having dramas, and. I'm like, oh man, my neck, mom's like every like I only did sort of ten laps, and it takes <laughs> it takes time just to get your eye back in because you, you know you're braking a little bit early, turning a little bit early because none of your natural reflexes are, are in, you can't rely on your subconscious mind because you haven't been relying on it. Your conscious mind doesn't think fast enough. You can't think, oh, where's the break point? Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, yes, I push the brake now. Oh, where's the turn point? Okay. I'll take the take my foot off. I mean, that's what we teach the beginners because you have to do that because they, they they're doing what's natural a natural human response, which is not a natural go karting response. When you drive a go kart, uh, you need to brake super late. You need to wait, 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 and not drift off the white line. You need, when when you're turning in for a hairpin, you're turning a lot later than you'd naturally think because you watch every peep later. They're always on the wrong side of the track. They're always turning early. So you'd have to assume that that's the natural human reaction. So you have to do unnatural human reactions to drive a car. So you teach people a brake here, finish braking here, turn here, finish turning here, accelerate there, accelerate there, drive over to that white line on the exit there. But then once you do it more, you, you stop thinking about that because it's become subconscious because you've done the done the reps. And all of a sudden you start to get in your flow state or whatever you want to call it and it's happening naturally because you're not thinking. You've removed thinking, which is the 
you know, the 8-bit processor and you're using your subconscious at 64-bit, which is just way, way faster. And that's how you become like a super fast driver, super smooth and polished because you can just not think. You just you, – you basically act in the moment. And I think that's one of the beauties of go-karting. Oh, that's a great way to explain it. Now, when you get mm. back into the seat, do you find yourself on the track knowing you're not at the limit and thinking about it? And it's just because yeah. of age. And it's like my young, my 20 year old self would have been breaking 10 feet deeper or would have been doing this or would have been doing that. Do you have those same relapses? Yeah. I go into old habits of um, probably breaking too much, like breaking hard and then just taking it all the way to the apex instead of just coming off and just going in a little hotter, going in a little hotter. Because doing a faster lap time is not driving down the straight any faster. You've got the same engine, same gear ratio as everybody else, and the track's still the same distance as it was a year ago or 10 years ago or yesterday and the week before and the month before. So if you want to go one second faster, you've got to go through the 10 corners one-tenth quicker. And to do that, you've got to go through them faster. To do that, it's more stress, more Gs on your head, your neck, your body. Plus, you've got to hold your body in a better position. You've got to be able to turn in, in the, the micro millimeters uh, of variations because you can't just turn a little bit later and still expect to hit the corner and you, if the track's grippy you've got to turn a little bit early and, and and turn a little less and roll into the into the into the fast line you can't turn across the rubber and stuff like that and you've got to feel for it it's all it's all um i can't say oh, i turn at this point because that point changes all the time i was just saying that last night at the track uh, he goes, where's your, where's your brake mark? Well, I don't really have a brake mark. I've just got to send it in deeper and deeper and deeper, and my computer's got to learn, oh, that was too deep because I hit the hit the marbles or I hit the grass or I hit the white line or I put it all the way into the tire barrier. That was my limit, and I've got to come back from that. So you've really got to feel your way around the go-kart track and you know drive faster, feel, feel for the grip, and if it's grippier, drive quicker. And you can't do that thinking all the time. You've, you've got to feel for it and – the only way you feel for it is by practicing a lot. And I know myself, I've practiced a lot, but if I take six months off and I get back in, those skills are there, but they just take a few days of repetition uh, to come back to the, the forefront. And I don't get enough repetition in. Uh, by the time the weekend's over, uh, I'm still rusty. When I leave, the track is not as rusty as when I got there. So you've really, <laughs> I, I try to, if I do go racing, I raced at the end of last year once. And I think I raced 18 months before that once and another 18 months before that once. So a couple of terrible results on top of terrible <laughs> results. It doesn't sort of lure you back in. But if I do go racing, I, I try to batch it all together in, in October and November here in Australia where the racing season is quiet. Um, I'm not as busy with work. I'm not as busy with customers trying to get them going better, which is my, my priority and my focus. Oh, that's your um, winner, I well, I can't be at the track going, uh, yeah, 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 you just do whatever. I, yeah. uh, Jace, go over there and yeah, yeah, just do this. Like I do that a couple of times and you're like, oh, all of a sudden, oh, I don't really like that guy, Des. He's a bit of a jerk. Uh, he's never got time for me at the track. That's what people remember. And, and you, you know, you're telling people to go away because you, you're busy trying to focus on your own racing. Um, and if you don't focus on your racing, your racing sucks. So. I just generally <laughs> – I don't do it. I, I take my shifter on my DD2 out to extreme karting for a bit of fun uh, and get in customers' carts and fang them around the track just to, you know, try to highlight errors with beginners, which is still pretty easy even if you are a bit rusty. You know, I'm not really polishing up. I've got top-line drivers, and I don't really have to polish up their skills. I polish up their mind uh, just trying to, once again, get their – get themselves out of the way, get them to stop thinking about things and start acting on their skills because they're all fast enough. Like once you hit that top level, you've just got to just reassure them that they're doing the right thing and try to get them into a state of mind where they can just go out, they're calm, they're not reactive, um, they're, they're trying to be emotionless and just going out and really just letting the car be fast underneath them. And when they do that, they, they really dominate. Yeah, you know, you said something there that really, it just took me back about 25 years about the reactive. And mm -hmm. one of the very first um, driver coaches that I had, uh, his name is Damon Meek. And 
he always told me, oh, you need to anticipate what's going to happen. And I never really thought about what he said until I realized, like, wait a second, I need it. I'm being reactive. I'm, I'm catching everything. I'm so I'm that 10th behind everything mm. going on. And, and he finally just got it drove into my head. It's like, no, you need to know if you do this, this is what the cart's going to do before you do it. And you need to expect that your input and how the cart's going to react. But if you're reacting to a bad mistake, well, you're, you're already losing speed. Yep. And, and when you say that, it's like, man, that's like, yeah, that's right. That was one, one of the very first things I ever learned from a driving coach. Yeah. So you, yeah, you have to be more non-reactive and, and a little bit less, uh, and less conscious of mind. You, it, it really is a subconscious, uh, muscle memory, um, process, car driving. Well, and I think a lot of us, we, we've all had that experience going down the highway where you get from point A to point B and you go, uh, how did I get here? Like, did I black Tom. out? Did I just kill 500 people? Did I, drive I mean, how did I get here? And, uh, I was watching a show up here. We have, we have a series of stations called PBS, which is public broadcasting. Uh, yeah. Stations. I've heard about it. Yeah. So in a lot of the stuff they go into, um, it's more of an educational type channel. Yeah and, yeah, and they were going into the subconscious mind, and they used that exact example on the show, and it's like, yeah, that's perfectly normal, because you've done that so repetitive that your conscious mind, you didn't need it any longer. It just became background processes. Yeah, and it's like, oh, okay, now I'm not so freaked out that I just forgot ten miles of the road. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think it's a, a in line the. In the book, uh, I think it's uh, Outliers, and they talk about guys that do 10,000 hours for full mastery of any one particular aspect of their life, whether it's go-kart driving or motor racing. You know, the, the current drivers that are at the top of the level, whatever example you want to want to draw on, uh, they've all done probably, if you if you uh, cook it back and counted all their hours every year, year on year, compound interest, that you just get that biggest dividend in your last year. So you, you don't get success starting generally at 18 in in uh, as a go-karter. Uh, there's, there's the exceptions to the rules, but generally most of the go-karting kids are starting at seven, six, five, and they're just going year in, year out, day in, day out, all the time, and you get the biggest results at, as an adult because you've just got such a huge foundation head start over everybody else and – I'd say it's the same for every sport. So everyone listening, what Derek just said is you need to get your 10,000 hours in as fast as you can. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every day you try and I don't, you're getting better. I'm not. And yeah. that's, oh, that's, um, that's a great point. Hmm. And I'm kind of regurgitating some of the stuff I've just read from other people's thoughts, but there's still things that I, I hold as, um, as the standard, you, you, it's time. Um, you can you can get every component in the world, the best team, and if you don't go and use it, those things, those resources, you you just don't get better. Now that's an excellent point. Um, God, it just uh, you're a, you're just you're a hundred percent right on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've seen it, I've heard it, and I, I truly believe it. Yeah. It, it, and I've seen it as well. I've seen it hands on. And it's uh, the people that have success year in, year out that have been around the sport for so long. And that's all they do. I mean, it's just like you said, it's repetition. It's, Reps, yeah. yeah. And they're committed to that craft. That's, that's it. That's their life. Yeah. Like the guys at, at Sweet Tech, um, is it some older guy there that started it? And he, he's, he's a super perfectionist, as Gary was saying, and he just works day in, day out. And he's just built on that every day, like more and more and more practice, more reps. And he's just getting better and better and better. And it becomes uh, like a flow. You don't even have to think. You just go to work and your hands just move. You can pick up that 10 mil spanner without even looking at it. You know, you know exactly the torque settings. You can pick up the torque wrench head. You know where it is in your toolbox. I, I don't know about you, but I put everything back in the exact same spot. So I don't actually have to think where things are. I already know where they are. They're programmed into my mind. I can 
pretty much tell you where every one of my spanners, every one of my screwdrivers are in my toolbox at any one time unless someone's borrowed it, which is no one.